Okay, every year in my yearbook class, we take hundreds of thousands of photos to cover the school year. I want to show you how I organize and edit those photos and how I keep track of everything in my class. So take what you want from this video. It's obviously not going to work for everybody, but it works for me and my system. So first thing I do is anytime a kid comes back from photographing an event, they take one of these and one of these little slips right here, which just says name, activity, date, and if we're doing a chronological book, which we usually do, they put the week that the event occurred in. They fill this out, they put the memory card and this piece of paper in here, and I only have one student who downloads photos for me. That's my photo editor. Keeping track and keeping these photos organized is such a huge job. I don't want 30 or 25 or 20 random kids doing that. I only want one kid who knows the system inside and out doing that. And then those are just stored in a little tub like this with a pen attached to it. So it's always super easy to fill out. And again, only my photo editor does anything with those. Okay, so let's talk about downloading the photos to the computer. I've already put a memory card into the card reader and then I'm gonna come over here onto in Adobe Bridge and I'm gonna click on this get photos from camera button right here. And, and this is going to launch the Adobe Bridge Photo Downloader. And by default, you're going to be on this right here. I would go ahead and just right away click on Advanced Dialog. And then this will load up. I like this because now I can see the photos and I can decide. Sometimes you'll get multiple events on the same memory card, although try to avoid it because that is obnoxious. But uh, I like to be able to see the photos that we're looking at here. So what do we do? We come over here and first we got to choose where they go. And again, this is super important. Make sure whoever's doing this knows the system. So for this, for example, this would go to 2022 yearbook. It would go into fall sports. It would go into football. It would go into varsity. And then we would put versus whatever and a date. Uh, I'm going to just go ahead and put this in versus Bellevue. But if we needed to make a folder, we'd just click on the new folder button right there. Let's go ahead and click on open. I do like to have it open Adobe Bridge right after. That way I can just make sure the photo's downloaded okay. I do like to have it delete the photos from the memory card after it downloads them just to make life easier. And then down here at the bottom, I do like to say who the person that took the photos is, who, who did it. So under creator, I'll put the name of the student that took the photos. And then I'll just go ahead and click on get media. You can see it's going to start moving the photos over and I'll show you what happens when it's all done. Okay, it's done downloading and it just says, hey, I've downloaded these photos. Are you sure you wanna delete them? I'm gonna go ahead and hit yes and it's gonna delete those photos. Press okay and then it's going to shut all this down and open those photos up in Adobe Bridge. Okay, so once the photos are on the computer, we do everything in Adobe Bridge. It's just a great digital asset management program that allows the students, no matter what computer they're on, to be able to access all of the files. So we're using Adobe Bridge here, and I've got a folder on our school Google Drive. So you see I've got a Google Drive, Share Drive, a Yearbook Drive, and then a 2022 Yearbook folder. So this is where all of our stuff lives. Ideally, you'd have an actual networked drive on your computer, but we do not in my district. So everything's over the Google Drive. Not that big of a deal, but it does make the process a little bit slower because the photos have to all sync to the computer every time a student wants to get on there. But it's not that big of a deal. So let's start with our fall sports folder. Let's go in here and you can see here are all the fall sports and activities. And let's just go into football and I'll show you how we have that organized. And so we've got uh, freshman, JV, and varsity. And then I did have a, a photographer who went in and split them up even farther at the request of one of the coaches. So let's just go into varsity. And you can see these are organized by game. So here's versus Bellevue on 11-5 versus Davis on 9-3. You, you can organize these however you want. This works well for us, but maybe putting the date first so that they're organized by date might be a little bit smarter. But either way, let's go into this folder and you can see there are 479 photos in here. This was not a game we normally would have covered, so it was an away game, so we don't have as many photos as we might have. Anyways, what I'm gonna have my students do is the kids who are working on the football page, as soon as these photos go active, either the photo editor, if they request it, or the students in the, uh, that are working on this page are gonna start going through this, and they're gonna start five-starring any photo that's a good photo. Now in Bridge, normally you have to press Command or Control and 5 to give something a 5 star. But if you come down here to this little button right here and click on that and you uncheck Use Command or Control for labels and ratings, then you can just press 5 on your keyboard. It's a little bit faster. So I'm going to have them not worry too much about each photo. Don't, don't spend a ton of time. I want them just to cruise through fast. And if a photo stands out and they're like, oh, that's kind of a cool photo, then I want them to just 
slap the number five. There's a photo that's got some action, some emotion. It's got the ball in it. It's got a face. That's a great photo. Just give it a five. Don't even think about it. Right. So we're just going to cruise through and we're not going to worry about like, is this the best photo? Does it tell the best story of the game? We're just going to go through and just as fast as we can, if we see one we like, we're going to give it five stars. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and do that real quick and then we'll pick it up from there. Okay, so I only made it about halfway through. You can see over here on the left-hand side, I've got 12 photos that have five stars. I bet I could have found probably another 10 or so if I had kept going through. Next thing I want to do is make a folder called Good Photo. So I'm just going to come up here and go to the File and choose New Folder. And I'm going to call this Good Photos. Whoops, let's try that again. Apparently I need to hit Rename and then do Good Photos. And I also want to give this one five stars. And another way you can give things five stars is just by clicking right there, although using the keyboard shortcut is certainly faster. Now, I've also given the Good Photos folder five stars. And the reason why is because I'm now going to come over here and I'm going to turn on the five-star filter, and I want to be able to see that folder. So I'm going to click right there to turn the five-star filter on. And now I can see all of my photos that have five stars on them. And I want to select them all. So I'm going to do that by clicking on the first one, holding down Shift, and clicking on the last one. You also could have pressed Command A to select them all, but I don't want this one selected, so I'll Command click on that one to deselect it. And then with just the photos selected, I now want to copy these and put them into my Good Photos folder. So I'm going to just right click on this and I'm going to choose Copy. And then I'm going to go ahead and double click on Good Photos and I'm going to right click and choose Paste. And there you go, that copied those photos into this folder for me, which is good because now I have a backup, but I also really like having one location where I know I have great photos and I have that here in my good photos folder. Now I need to go through and decide which of these am I going to actually use on my page. I may not use any of them or I may use one or I might use seven. It's just going to depend on the person making the page. So what we're going to do now is we're going to right click and make a new folder. And we're going to call this RTU. And RTU stands for ready to use, ready to upload, whatever you want to call it. And at this point, I'm going to go through these photos. And now I'm really going to take some time. I'm going to think about my page. Where, what do I need on my page? What stories do I need to tell on my page? What's going to be a good fit on the page? What photo is going to work best for what I'm trying to do? And maybe it's a mod about uh, students learning and asking questions. So maybe we would use this one. Or maybe it's about uh, Lucian Cohn, the new running back. So maybe we'd use this one. Or, you know, it's up to you. You are going to be the one to decide what photos you want to use. But what I like to do is I like to give these ones a new rating, a way to say, this is one that I definitely want to use. And I do that by pressing 6 on my keyboard. And you can see that labels it red. And red means we're using this in the book or we're probably going to use it in the book. Things change, obviously. So let's say uh, we're doing a mod on people getting super amped up and uh, being curious. So we're going to use these two. To get rid of, of a rating, I would just click on it and press 6 again, and that would get rid of the red. And now I want to edit these photos and get them ready to go in the yearbook. We don't ever want to put a photo in the yearbook that's just straight out of the camera. We always want to edit them and make them look better. So... I'm going to come in here, and I'm going to click on this one, and I'm going to hold down Command and click on this one to select both of them. Command or Control if you're on a PC. And I'm going to come up here to the top in Bridge, and I'm going to click on this little dude right here. This is the Open in Camera Raw button. And this is how I'm going to edit my photos. So let's talk about what we're looking at here. If you're familiar with Adobe Lightroom, this is going to seem very familiar. This is basically just a in Bridge version of Lightroom. So... Uh, I'm going to come over here, and I always start editing my photos just by hitting Auto. And I also want to turn on these two dudes right here. These are my clipping warnings. This one right here warns me when things are starting to get too dark. And this one over here warns me when things are starting to get too bright. See that text back there? See how that's turning red when the clipping warning is turning on? That's light, or, excuse me, that's Bridge's way of letting me know, hey, things are getting pretty bright back here. Same with here. This is saying, hey, things are getting pretty dark back here. In fact, if I take my exposure and drag this to the left, You'll see we'll start to get a lot of blue. So blue is pretty much not something you normally want. Although if it's a night sky, I really don't care if that's gone dark, too dark. But uh, same with red. If we're getting red, that's Bridge's way of saying, hey, this is getting really bright. And that's a warning as well. So I'm going to start by just hitting the auto button and then turning on, making sure my clipping warnings are turned on. And then I'm going to just really only make a few adjustments. I'm going to do a little exposure just to kind of get it just right. And again, I like to make sure the faces that I can see look good. And then I'll usually play around with the whites and the black slider right here. Maybe bring it up just till 
We start to get a little bit of white uh, right there. That tells me we're getting too bright, so I'm good with that. And then blacks, I'll bring that down until things that shouldn't be black are starting to turn black. Like, again, I don't care that the night sky is turning black. That's not a big deal. But if this guy's helmet starts to turn black, well, now we've got issues. So I'm going to back that off. And right about there looks good. See, I'm getting a little bit of blackness in those dark shadows under there. But I really don't mind. Might bring that back just a little bit more. And uh, I may also do just a touch of vibrance. Be really careful, you guys. Don't overdo the vibrance. And don't touch the saturation. The saturation just makes everybody's skin look orange. I would just leave that down. Just a touch of vibrance is going to pop just a little bit of color into your photo. If you want to turn these warnings off, you can so you can see what your photo is going to look like but I'm pretty happy with that. And let's go to my next photo. So real quick, again, I'll do this one much faster. Auto, my warnings are already turned on. Exposure and expose for the face is what I'm looking at when I'm doing exposure. Whites until things that st turn, start to turn white that shouldn't. Blacks until things start to turn black that shouldn't. And maybe a little bit of vibrance and that's it. Now, we need to save these. If you don't save these, you cannot use them. So again, I need to select both of them. So I'm gonna press Command or Control A to select both photos. You can see there's little boxes around both of them now. I'm gonna come up here to my top right hand corner. I'm gonna click on this little button right here. And this is where it's really easy to mess things up. And I've gotta tell you guys, if you don't keep your photos organized, you're gonna regret it because like I said earlier, by the end of the year, we're going to have over 100,000 images. So we must stay Organize. So let's just say where we want these to be saved at. So we're going to come in here. We're going to select a folder. And here we go. We're in the Varsity versus Bellevue. Good photos. This is where we started. We just need to wait a second for it to load up. And there's that RTU folder. And this is where, again, the only photos that go in RTU should be the photos that are going to go on your page or that you're planning on putting on your page. I don't ever want to see like 20 photos in here because that's too many from one event. So... So I'm just going to select RTU here as my ready to use folder and hit select. Let's leave this the same. If you want to rename your stuff, you can. I don't because my folders are already pretty well renamed. Make sure this right here is on JPEG. Pretty much any design software you're going to be using will be able to use a JPEG. I like my quality to be 10 uh, and I don't really worry about anything else. You could turn on sharpen for screen and do standard. And that's basically it, you guys. That's about all I do for editing my photos. So I'm going to go ahead and hit save. And we are done here. So I'm going to hit done in the bottom right hand corner. And I just want to show you one last thing. So look at these two photos. This is just in the good photos folder. See this icon in the top right hand corner? This means the edits that exist on this photo only exist in Bridge. Meaning if I tried to open this in InDesign or upload it to eDesign or some other online design platform, those changes would not be there. Let's go into RTU you'll notice that icon is not on these photos. That means the changes, the edits that I've done are locked into the photo. What that means is that if you over edit a photo, which I've done here on purpose just for this demonstration, is that what I can do is I can come in here and right click and move this one to trash and press OK. Come back here to good photos and here it is again. And those edits again are still non-destructive they haven't really been locked in which means i can take this one back into camera raw and i can be like you know what probably didn't need any saturation on that i don't like how his skin started started to turn a little bit orange in fact i'm going to use my temperature slider here to cool that down just a little bit and now it doesn't look quite so over edited so let's save this one again by clicking on this button and look at that it's already going to the rtu folder which is exactly what i want Everything else looks good here. One of the biggest mistakes people make is they forget to change this from DNG digital negative, which is what it's on by default, to JPEG. So make sure you do that and then go ahead and hit save. And then we can hit done. And let's go back into RTU. And there you go. Now I have my two photos ready to put into InDesign or online design software of your choosing to use for your book. And that is basically it, you guys. We should be able to come through and go through all of these and go into cross country and go into an event and we should be able to see all of the photos that were taken and then a good photos folder that has all of the good photos and then an RTU folder that has a few of the edited photos ready to go, ready to be used on the page. And that is how I edit and store all of the photos that go into our high school yearbook.